Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. And I'm wife. Together we're reading the Bible for the very first time. We grew up without religion and wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Well, what have we learned so far? That God is a dick, and apparently some people believe in talking donkeys? We're not trying to pass ourselves off as experts. Nope, we're just reading the Bible for the first time and giving our first take reaction. If you'd like to join us in this venture, you might consider starting at episode one. Otherwise, jump in wherever you like. All right, let's go read the Bible. Yeah, let's get to it. Husband! Wife! Do you not remember where we're at because we're in the middle of Psalms? Well, we're getting ready to do, I think it was 80-something. No, 78. 78. Son of a bitch. (laughs) Anyway, yeah, so we just got done with, um, the 104 was the last one we did, I know Mm -hmm. that. 102 through 104. Mm -hmm. And uh, we read a really old one last time that I kind of liked, actually. Yeah, yeah, because it was all nature Very neat, yeah. And it was probably from the same source as, um, like, some early, um, whatever. Elohim God shit. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so it was it was decent-ish in my book. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. as far as poetry and, we learned a new you know, imagery. We learned word. Yeah. The henotheistic. Henotheistic. Something like that. Henotheistic, yeah. Something like that. Right, yeah. One where it acknowledges that other gods may exist. So did we really learn the new word? Because we didn't really pull that one off very well. I mean... We we half learned it. We half learned it. It's still new. We recognize it in conversation now. Yeah. That's true. And it was exciting to know because we already had the sense that that was a thing. We just didn't know that there was vocabulary for it. Right, right. So that's exciting. It is. It is. Yeah. Speaking of exciting... I've got some news, and I'm going to have to change our entire intro that I just changed last night Mm -hmm. after this happened. Mm -hmm. But we had um, one of our patrons, actually, Mm -hmm. reach out and donate half of what we asked for for our campaign for our live equipment. In one lump sum. In one lump sum. So, Natalie. Natalie. Holy fuck. Natalie. Thank you so much. Ridiculously above and beyond. So grateful. I mean, I... Just astounding. Really don't even have the words. I, I mean, we were talking about, you know, pretending that we're on Wayne's World and, like, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Yeah, that that's, I, I mean, wow. So, that being said, um, I do want to mention that Natalie is a longtime patron of ours. Mm-hmm. And um, they donated $250 to our campaign. Yes. I mean, it was just unreal. Unreal. And, um... Thank they, you, thank you, Natalie. Yeah, they um they have their own podcast that they do with a couple other people called mm-hmm. Lost in Revision, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it is a really cool um, podcast that they cover some like uh, ancient folklore and fairy tales and, and things like children's that. Children's literature. Yeah, no, it's yeah. really really neat. It's so cool, and um, I highly recommend checking it out. I'm going to link to that podcast's link tree mm-hmm. in our show notes. So. Go check out Natalie's podcast and, I mean, thank, thank them for us. Seriously. Like, uh, it, it, uh, wow. Yeah. That's all I got is wow. Just holy wow. Lots Sorry, of wow. I know we're rambling here, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> you woke up this morning and ran in and we're like, beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, honestly, we were trying to figure out how we're just going to like, rent the equipment because we weren't we didn't have enough to get the equipment for future stuff and everything like that at this point like kind of piecemeal it like borrow this rent that and see yeah. what we can throw and, together and now we're now we're at least going to be able to get a minuscule something together i think yeah yeah so it, thank you thank you thank you yes natalie you are the bee's knees and the cat's pajamas and now that we've rambled on for a long time thanking natalie which is very much you know as wor- worthy w- as well we should yeah um, we should probably get into our episode, which today, again, we're covering Psalms 78, and what was the other ones that we're covering? 105 and 106 to conclude um, book four of the book of Psalms. Concluding book four. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that's, oh, I should mention one last thing. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. campaign is not fully funded yet. We do only have 82%. Natalie's got the biggest share, but, uh, you know, again, 53555, five, five, text it to... Help us finish up the last bit here or 
there's a link in the show notes for that as well. Mm-hmm. All right. That being said, let's go ahead and get into this episode. Okie dokie. All right. So I got to admit before we get into these that I'm not super excited. And no? I know you're not supposed to start right. an Right. Yeah. Episode. Don't start an episode like that. I know. But I have to because the three that I'm about to read, um, they are the three great history psalms. Okay. That's like literally what they're called. Yeah. And they're a bit lengthy. And I didn't have a lot of notes about them. Maybe this will be a history in the making. With the comments that I'm going to lend to <laughs> I'm these, just, these psalms. I'm hoping that the psalms themselves bring something to the table because everything that I just said is about what I'm bringing to the table. Got it. Got it. So. All right. I just wanted to put that up front so that, you know, you set your expectations super low. I Yeah. Okay. Oh, they're set super low. Okay. Real so, fucking low. Um, Just to explain again what's happening here, we skipped over Psalm 78, which was back in, I think, book two or three. It was in one of those books. It was either two or three. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, And we're in book four now. Right. So what the fuck, right? Well, when I took notes on number 78 back when we were in In those, those, right? um, it said that it is one of the three great history psalms. And so I was like, well, we should put those three Three history psalms together. Sure. Because it was odd to chop them up the way they did. Okay. So here we are going back in time to pick up the one that we skipped, Psalm 78. And this is a Maskil of Asaph. Okay. And I won't say Asaph Rocky because that (laughs) makes you so annoyed. Oh, my people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. Yeah. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? I mean, yes, so far I do. Do you know know what that's from? Yeah, it's from, um, it's, uh, oh, the Jackie Chan and, and, uh. Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker, yeah. Yeah. And. What is it? Rush, uh, not Rush Rush Hour. Hour. Is it Rush Hour? Something like that, yeah. Okay, yeah. It was one of those that was really good. Right. Yeah. Okay. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter hidden things, things from of old. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Okay. What we have heard and known, what our fathers have told us, we will not hide them from their children. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord. So indoctrination. Mm -hmm. Got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. His power and the wonders he has done. He decreed statuses for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our forefathers to teach our children so the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born, and they in turn would tell their children. So, yeah, that's yes. how you spread a religion. You, that's you lots teach of, the children that this is cult stuff happening. all true and, and mm-hmm. don't worry about whether God is actually there or not. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's just true. Speaking of cults, i I got to interrupt here. Um, have you heard that there are a bunch of kids missing from, um, uh, people who have left, I think the church of Latter-day Saints, hmm. um, these moms who have left the cult, okay. um, for a while, some of their kids were like running away to run back to the cult. Cause you know, they think that their yeah. parent who left the church has Was wrong. has been, you know, defiled and sure. is now a voice of Satan or whatever. Yeah. But now um, they are actually reported missing. And huh. there's this whole thing where um, apparently some part of the Church of Latter-day Saints, the guy that is in jail that is still leading that that religion or whatever i have no idea what you're talking okay, about okay so, so there's there's a big head honcho of the church yeah, of no, I, I, Saints, I get that and he's in jail right oh. now and he's still leading from jail okay and he is saying that um there's like this big sacrifice thing that's coming up that's going to be happening and so yeah yeah and so um nobody's talking about it because it's like you know, what stays in Vegas stays in Vegas, but... I'm going to have to do some research on this, because this sounds, like, way over the top. 
Right. Well, I heard it. And I don't on... want to be spreading like false information. Okay, here. look, I That's heard this it on inflammatory. One of... Right. No, I heard it on one of my news podcasts, not one of the trash ones. Okay. So I don't remember if it was like a Wall Street Journal or like. Um, it wasn't NPR. It might have been a New York Times. It, it was one of those. Like, just, you were worrying me because it sounds a little like QAnon for Latter-day Saints, you know. Right. Whatever. It's just that, okay, so what some of the police and these moms are worried about is that um, this is gearing up to, there's going to be another, um, what was that thing where a, a mass suicide happened? Are you talking about like the Heaven's Gate thing? Yeah. That's, that wasn't the Latter-day Saints. I know, but, but they're worried that this is going to be something, something like, like that. that. Okay. Yeah, where, right. you know, a bunch of church people, like, kill the kids and, and you know, drink the Kool-Aid kind of thing. Got it. So Got it. So that's a little, little scary yeah. and weird that, like, I only heard it on this one newscast and yeah, nowhere I'm, else. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to look into this. Cause... Okay, I'll try to find what I heard it on so that you can share that link, too. Okay. Because that had me concerned. And... I Well, <laughs> I am concerned as well, but I'm also concerned that I'm, I, I don't, again, I, I'm not discounting the fact that you heard this, but, like, that's a pretty big accusation. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I just want to make sure mm-hmm. that it's, like, legit. Okay. So. Yeah, well, we will, we will look into it. I will let you know where I heard it. And okay, and we will share that link. Sounds good. Okay? Sounds good. Okay. So anyway, speaking of children and cults, yes, all, yes, that's where I was going with that. Got it. Then <laughs> they would put their trust in God and would not forget His deeds, but would keep His commands, because that's what you do with children and cults. Right. Yeah. Uh, they would not be like their forefathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation. Yeah, those people who never saw God but got told that he was there anyway. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Damn them. Whose hearts were not loyal to God, whose spirits were not faithful to him, those fuckers. Yeah. The men of Ephraim, though armed with bows, turned back on the day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant and refused to live by his law. Mm. Mm, those okay. fuckers. They forgot what he had done. The wonders he had shown them, he forgot. I guess, yeah. Mm-hmm. Either that or it wasn't, like, shown to them. Right, in, right. In any meaningful way. Exactly. He did miracles in the sight of their fathers in, their in the fa- land oh. of Egypt. Remember I we see. talked about this? Yeah. Um, How it's like these people grew up having heard these stories of stuff that had happened, but, yeah. like, never, but actually never actually saw, saw it. it for themselves. Right. But were expected to... Act as though they had. It's much like what we deal with. Like, uh-huh. I mean, we grew up in a world that was much more religious than the world we live in now, which that's to, that's to say that this world is still very religious. Yeah. But we grew up in a world hearing stories about religion and mm-hmm. God and how it's, you know, miracles this real thing and, and miracles. But none of that shit ever happened in our lifetime. And for the most part, I never actually heard anybody tell me about a time that it happened in their lifetime either. It didn't. It so didn't. it kind of seemed like a lot of bullshit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's just a, it's just this perpetual backward motion of yeah. Remember when he did these things? No, nobody fucking remembers when he did these things because it never actually happened. Somebody made it up, and all of you are like, remember that time? And it's like, how do you any of you remember that time? They don't. They don't. You don't. Right. Stop. Stop it. He did miracles in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt in the region of Zoan. He divided the sea and led them through. He made the water stand firm like a wall. Remember? I do. Remember I, that? I mean, in the Bible, I remember. Remember that Those happened? words being said. Do you remember you saw that happen? Nope. I did not see it happen. <laughs> yeah. I would I would think twice if I if I saw water parting in front of me. I would I would be like it That's some David Copperfield bullshit though. Well, I would be like looking for the strings. I know? mean, I would too, but I mean, again, it it would make me if I if I walked up to the sea, any sea, mm-hmm. and and it parted in front of me, I'm gonna be like, hmm, that's something, that's pretty that's pretty crazy right there. That's something to consider. That's some I wanna, high class fleecing. I'm gonna go back. Going I'm gonna go back and think about this one now. Your grift is on high level. I'll also be snapping a picture on my phone because mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. you know, because you no don't, one no one's gonna believe that shit. You don't have Even to. Christians wouldn't believe that shit. No. That's the funny thing. If you walked up to the sea and said, 
I saw a part in front of me. They'd be like, bullshit. Right? What are you talking about? Exactly. Well, one time, like, my mom was telling me about, like, how, you know, God tells her this and God tells her that. And she mm-hmm. knows because God is in her heart, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then another time, um, like, I have this penchant to always, like, correct a thing. Like, if I see it wrong, I have to correct it. Yeah. And my mom was like, why do you do that? And I said, because God tells me to. Like, it's, I have to do it. Like, I'm led to do it. I'm pushed to do it. I can't not correct it. If you don't have that comma or apostrophe, I have, like, I was trying to speak her language. Yeah. And she was having none of it. Got and it. I'm like, how come, like, when I'm compelled, it's not God? But when you're compelled, it's totally God. I think that we should just start taking um, religious shit extra seriously mm-hmm. and be like, yeah, I totally, I saw this guy walking on water. I think Jesus is back, guys. <laughs> I think, and, and there was, like, water parted. Behind. I mean, it was crazy, all the miracles, all in one time. Mad, it's I'm insane. telling you. insane. This is cool. Did you see how doctors have cured people, like, with surgeries and stuff? Wait, no. That's, that's not, not the right. I was, yeah, that's not. What I was. No, yeah, that that's actual science. Never but I was, mind. I was like, I was thinking, you know, like let's just let them think that Revelations is here, right? It's you think here. they would think we're sane or insane? Well, I mean, it depends on how far you go. Like, if you say that no, there was totally blood coming out of the bathtub drain. Yeah, like the waters are boiling. Right. You know. Right. Boiling blood. Yeah. It's rain and frogs or whatever. Right. Then they would be like, "You're making fun." But You're why? Being silly. Why? They believe it in this fucking book. Because who are you to see something like that? <laughs> You're not the person who should see it. They are. Uh-huh. That's that's why my mom could not take me seriously when I was telling her that my com- compelling the the thing compulsion. that was yeah, my compulsion was from God. Like so what you're telling me is that Yours is God. Mine's a mental illness. Got it. Okay. It couldn't possibly be that either we both have God or we're both mentally ill. Right? Right. right. No. You are religious. I'm just a psycho. Got it. Okay. Right. Right. (sighs) Okay. So he guided them with a cloud by day and with the light from the fire all night. He split the rocks in the desert and gave them water as abundant as the seas. Yeah, I remember that all from Exodus in that book. In that book of Exodus. Yeah. He brought streams out of a rocky crag and made water flow down like rivers. Yep. Yum, yum, yum. I that, love rocky water. That book says. Oh, that reminds me. Speaking of rocky water. Rocky water. Yeah. Well, I just said I love rocky yeah, water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got it. Okay. Got it. So now there are water sommeliers. Um. You've heard of wine sommeliers, right? No. Okay, okay a wine sommelier <laughs> is a guy who swishes wine and, like, he's a connoisseur. Oh, okay, all right. Like, he could tell you all the different... Got it. I didn't know they had an actual name. I'm sorry. Yeah, those, I'm not, those guys I'm not are wine sommeliers. wine refined. Yeah, apparently. oh, me neither. I mean, you pretend, like, you do that slurpy fucking thing with a... <laughs> <laughs> with your fucking lip and pretend. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. You don't give a shit. You don't even really like wine that much. Why are you doing that? Because the point's to taste it. Okay, but in the best you, way possible. But you don't care. So why are you doing the slurpy thing? You don't, don't like wine. You're you're so judgmental. I am. I don't I don't I don't have a who cares? I I make fun of Why the actual, why are you upset about how I drink wine? I'm upset because you don't even like wine. But why does it matter it, to you? It matters because you're putting on airs. Am I? Yeah, when you do that slurpy thing with okay. your lip, you're going you're trying to show me that you know how to taste wine properly. And I'm like, man, put that shit in a mason jar and I'm just, chug it. I'm just trying. But that's not how I, I mean, I wouldn't do that ever. I have done that many times and it is good. <laughs> it is good. Okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing with water sommeliers. Yeah. You ready? Mm-hmm. So now there are places, there are restaurants that you can go and you can have different types of water to complement your food. And there are types of water that are more rocky than others, and there's some that taste more like air, and there's others that um, taste more volcanic. Like, there's all these different styles and types of water. Yeah. And you should order the correct type of water to complement your food. I see. And also, did you know it's a no-no, apparently, to 
to put ice. You're not supposed to put ice in your water. I mean, it's better for you if you drink water at room temperature, for sure. Okay. It, it It's better for your body. It's better for a lot of things. But so. it's it's declassé if uh, you put ice in your water. Well, you don't want to uh, contaminate that special water mm-hmm. with some other type of water. You don't want to look like you're from a trailer park. <laughs> and I'm like, guess what? I'm from a trailer park. <laughs> That's why I chug my wine in a mason jar. And it's why I don't give a fuck where your fucking water comes from. And you probably think it tastes great. And I probably think it tastes like shit. Cause I, don't I don't know. I got to say, there's a there's a place up here near us called Yellow Springs. Mm, and there the is actually a Yellow Springs. Right? I, I didn't actually realize yeah, that. Yeah. And it's not, it because there's, it's not because there's piss in the water. Okay? okay. Just to be clear. Okay. So there's iron in the water. Oh. And there's springs that come out. And like you... You know, when I was younger, we would go up there and, like, you actually can drink from the streams and try it out. And it was so good. Because it was just fresh out the ground. Oh, my God. And it's got this, like, ironish taste to it. And it's just, I don't know. I've never had water quite the same as that. It's probably horrible for you. I'm sure that you're probably right. But you know what? It tastes fucking good. Oh, and here's the other water that tastes good. I, when I was growing up, lived on, or lived in a small town. And my grandparents lived out in the country. And they had a well. And there was a tin cup that hung from that well. You said tin cup, but I think tin, you meant tin. 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 A cup made of tin. Tin. Yeah. Tin cup. Go. Sorry, I should I should say um, people from the Midwest have a really hard time with their I's and their E's. Yeah. So they say pin and pen as though they're the same, same word. Same fucking word. But they're not, though. It's the same word. So I just, I, I had to put that out there because you said 10 cup instead of 10 yeah. cup. Yeah, anyway. So go on. So we would drink out of this cup. And mm-hmm. not only was there a little bit of iron from the, the well water, mm-hmm. but there was also the 10 cup you're drinking from. And it's ice cold because it's coming out of a well. So fucking good. Like, there's never been better water than that in my entire life. It's in, the best water. In your 10 cup. In my 10 cup. In your 10 cup. Yeah, Exactly. Do you write with a pen or a pen? I write with a pen. Oh, my God. Okay. I have to just... I can't. I can't with Ohio. I just can't. <laughs> Seriously. Like, one time I was arguing with an English major because they were trying to tell me that something rhymed with pen or pen. I don't remember. And I'm like, oh, you're from the Midwest. You really can't... You can't hear the difference. Yeah. If you're from the Midwest, you legitimately cannot hear the difference between... The lowercase i and the lowercase e. Very true. And it's so weird to me yeah. because I'm not from here. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Well, I I feel an obligation to let people listening understand because they are also not all from the Midwest. Right. I understand okay. that. So you didn't drink out of a 10 cup. You drank out of a tin cup. Right. It matters. Yeah. I mean. To, to somebody who doesn't what the fuck would a number 10 cup be anyway okay whatever you know anyways context you know it matters so water okay <laughs> god water flowing, yeah god water flowing down the river I wonder what god water tastes like oh god it tastes like pee i'm sure yeah but they continued to sin against him rebelling in the desert against the most high those fuckers they willfully put god to the test by demanding the food they craved oh yeah Wait, when they called no they didn't demand the food they craved they demanded any food at all because they were fucking starving. They were getting manna. Okay, but they were like... Can we have anything else? It's Something, nice anything? that you've given us mush for years now. I sure would like a fucking anything but mush. Yeah, I couldn't imagine eating crackers for 40 years. I mean, that's basically you know what, I mean? what it was. Yeah. So I really think that this is like... It's kind of bull- And then he killed them over it. He's like, here's your fucking food. Yeah. And then, like, just made it rain birds from the sky and, you know, killed people. Mm -hmm. It was raining pheasants, I think. Like, what a dick. Yeah. That's a dick move. That was a dick move. Like, sorry, we're hungry for meat. We've been eating crackers for 40 years. My God, I I think I'm allowed to be upset about this. Right? Yeah. Like, don't gaslight me and make me feel like I'm an asshole for missing something that has not been in my diet for several years yeah, you now. You sent us on this journey. When the fuck is it over? I just want some goddamn food. Like, real shit. And, and anyway, maybe I wasn't like, I'll die if I don't get it. Maybe I was just like, oh, remember remember French fries? Yeah, French fries were so good. good. So good. Like, when I lived overseas, when right. my dad was stationed overseas, um, we all missed McDonald's fries. Yeah. Like, it was just a thing. 
we all collectively missed McDonald's fries. Right. It doesn't mean that you have to, like, kill a fucking potato farm and dump it on our heads. Right. Jeez. Yeah. Okay, they spoke against God saying, can God spread a table in the desert? When he struck the rock, water gushed out and streams flowed abundantly. Uh, But can he also give us food, though? Can he supply meat for his people? When the Lord heard them, he was very angry. Yeah, he was. His fire broke out against Jacob and his (laughs) wrath rose against Israel for they did not believe in God or trust in his deliverance. They just wanted food. Yeah. Fuck. I remember this. Yeah. I remember being pissed at the time. Yeah. Yet he gave a command to the skies above and opened the doors of the heavens. He rained down manna for the people to eat. He gave them the grain of heaven. Men. Okay. Hold on. The, the, so there's two separate times. And he's apparently talking about the time he gave them manna. That was a nicer time, Thank I guess. you for the manna. Thank you for not making us starve to death. Right. I guess. But there was another time they asked, and that was for the pheasants That and stuff. was when the pheasants fell on and them. And that was some fucked up shit that God did. Yeah. And that was wrath, and that was killing. And I'm so sorry, but why are you mad that they are hungry? Right. Yeah. Like, literally... Maybe you're from, like, another part of the universe and you're not comfortable or familiar enough with humans to recognize that they eat. Right. Like, maybe you're an alien. I don't know. But humans eat. Yeah. God, this makes me so mad. Uh Uh-huh. Men ate the bread of angels. He sent them all the food they could eat. He let loose the east wind from the heavens and led forth the south wind by his power. He rained meat down on them like dust. There it is. Flying birds like sand on the seashore. He made them come down inside their camp all around their tents. They ate till they had had more than enough, for he had given them what they craved. Wait, this is not... They're making this sound like a good thing. It was not a good... Go read that section in Exodus. It was not good. It was shitty compliance. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was, yes, you they... want hungry, you want food? I'll give you food. And then he dumped like a grocery store on top of their head. And there was some death involved in it too. Yeah. Like it yeah. wasn't just a nice thing. No, he was definitely being a shit. He yeah. was being a shit. Yeah. Don't, and... don't rewrite history, you fucking psalm. Yeah. You fucking psalm. <laughs> <laughs> but before they turned from the food they craved, even while it was still in their mouths, God's anger rose against them because he was a petty little fuck. Mm, Yep. He put to death the sturdiest among them, cutting down the young men of Israel. There we go. Because they dared to be hungry. Yeah, how dare they? How dare you be hungry? I will kill you. Uh, In spite of all this, they kept on sinning. In spite of his wonders, they did not believe. So he ended their days in futility and their years in terror. Whenever God slew them, they would seek him. They eagerly <laughs> turned to him again. <laughs> Whenever God slew them, yeah, they would turn to him. God, stop slewing us. Right? God, please don't kill us anymore. We're sorry. We're sorry oh, we were Jesus hungry. Christ. We're sorry we were thirsty. We're sorry we wanted new underwear. I'm your God. I have to kill you to make you want to worship me. Right? I'm sorry. My bad. Like, if he had planned better, he could have just, like dole out water and manna and feasts along the way that right? they could have like written into their celebration. Yeah, it could have been a real joyful trip, you know, like right? it could have been a real good time, party the whole way, you know, and worship God because sure. he's, you know, being wonderful to them You're and everything. asking too much of these people. You're asking too much of any person. I did one thing one time and you have to remember it for the rest of your life and never forget me, la la la. Right. And if you do, then I'm going to just, I don't know, kill you. Yeah. What? What? That is not the sign of a good leader. No. That is not good leadership. I don't like him. It's not a good sign of a stable person, let alone a god. No. So It's almost like um, a psychotic lunatic male wrote this. Right, right. And then we're all like, yeah, that tracks. God would totally be like that. <laughs> and then the women are over here like, you know, 2,000 plus years later going, wait, wait, hang on. This reads a little. Um... I'm, I'm I'm over here going the same thing, <laughs> just to be clear. And there's a lot of men that are very yeah. not for yeah. No, the you're right. You're the right. You're right. It just, I don't know. It seems weird. The whole thing is weird and yeah. dumb and bad and wrong. Right. Whenever God slew them, they would seek him. They eagerly turned to him again. 
they remembered that God was their rock, rock, rock. That God most high was their redeemer. But then they would flatter him with their mouths, lying to him with their tongues. Yeah. Their hearts were not loyal to him. They were not faithful to his covenant. Yet he was merciful. He forgave their iniquities and did not destroy them, except for sometimes he fucking did. Right. You know? Yeah. Like, you can't say he didn't destroy them when you literally, like, three sentences ago said, and he destroyed them. Right. Time. Why are we relitigating the entire fucking Exodus story? I Fuck. Don't know. <sighs> so annoying. Time after time, he restrained his anger and did not stir up his full wrath. Oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> so what they're saying is he's more of a dick than he actually showed right, up. Right, right. You, know. you think this is bad. <laughs> right. Just be grateful that I wasn't like... Full dick. Yeah. Mode. Yeah. You know. ooh, ooh. He remembered that they were but flesh, a passing breeze that does not return. He remembered... That's sweet of him. Yeah, it is. What a sweetheart. Mm -hmm. How often they rebelled against him in the desert and grieved him in the wasteland. Again and again they put God to the test. They vexed the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember his power. The day he redeemed them from the oppressor, the day he displayed his miraculous signs in Egypt, his wonders in all the region of Zoan, they turned their rivers to blood. They could not drink from their streams. He sent swarms of flies that devoured them and frogs that devastated them. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I remember all those times. He that... was also hardening the Pharaoh's heart mm -hmm. so that, you know, they had to keep coming back and doing uh -huh. these things. So yeah. it wasn't even. It wasn't even their fault. Right. It wasn't yeah. even their fault. Yeah. God literally was doing this on purpose. Right. And was making Pharaoh be mad so that he would have to keep doing this. Yeah. This whole stoop, so frustrating. I, I, it's bringing back memories of how angry I was early on reading the Bible because mm -hmm. the stories were just so fucking stupid. Yeah, yeah. He gave their crops to the grasshopper, their produce to the locust. He destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore figs with sleet. He gave over their cattle to the hail, their livestock to bolts of lightning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. He unleashed against them his hot anger, hot, nice anger, his wrath, indignation, and hostility, a band of destroying angels. Mm, yeah. He prepared a path for his anger. He did not spare them from death, but gave them over to the plague. Yeah, yeah. He struck down all the firstborn of Egypt because killing babies he is sure awesome. That's a great right? show of yeah, power. Good stuff there. The first fruits of manhood and the tents of ham. But he brought his people out like a flock. He led them like sheep through the desert. He guided them safely so they were unafraid. But the sea engulfed their enemies. Thus he brought them to the border of his holy land, to the hill country his right hand had taken. He drove out nations before them and allotted their lands to them as an inheritance. He settled the tribes of Israel in their homes. I mean, it said that, but they also didn't because they didn't actually fully drive out everybody, which right. that was a point of contention for us. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. we got rid of everybody, but not really. No. We got rid of everybody again, but not really. Still not really. Never. Never. They never got rid of no. everybody. And they kept saying they did. Yeah. That was weird. Not that it matters, really, but, like, why lie about it? Right. Exactly. It's such an odd thing to, like, build into your story specifically. Right. But they put God to the test and rebelled against the Most High. They did not keep his statutes. Like their fathers, they were disloyal, disloyal and faithless, as unreliable as a faulty bow. Mm. Could you imagine if everything in your life, the only thing that you could use to describe it was to compare it to a weapon? <laughs> it was as pointy as a stick. It was as sharp as a rock that's sharp. Yeah. You know? Right. Like, okay. They angered him with their high places. They aroused his jealousy with their idols. When God heard them, he was very angry. He rejected Israel completely. Because they he was jealous. He yeah. Was, he was jealous of mm -hmm. other gods. Mm -hmm. That's why. Yes. Because God, this mm -hmm. omniscient, 
perfect, all-knowing, all-knowing all being mm-hmm. was jealous. Yes. Just, I want to say it one more time. Jealous. We still sing a song today. Our God is a jealous God is he <coughs> forever Sorry. and ever something. Blah, 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 blah. Our God is a jealous God. But it's just a ridiculous concept. I'm like, can you just listen to those lyrics? If, like, literally you're excited to sing about a God who is a jealous God. The God who created the star Beetlejuice for, what is it, four million or billion light years away from us. I was and, thinking the movie Beetlejuice and you're talking about the star. Yeah. No, and, <laughs> and, 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 you know, countless other galaxies and planets and star systems and what have you, right? Mm-hmm. This God, mm-hmm. hypothetically, hypothetically in canon, mm-hmm. this God is jealous because you have a statue of some other fucking God. Yeah. That's what that's what's happening. Mm-hmm. That's 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 for real. You, that's a real thing. You made all the things, but this rock got you worried. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I mean, it's such an absurd concept. Okay, but speaking of Beetlejuice, yeah, the movie, right? They're working on a sequel. What? Oh, Winona yeah. Ryder gonna be in it? Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Guess who is playing the new? Um, Goth Beetlejuice? Girl. Oh, uh, no, no. Oh, Michael Goth Keaton's girl. coming back. Okay. I was going to say, you, know, you, you can't do a... Beetlejuice without him. No, yeah. He's coming back as Beetlejuice. Okay. Um, But you have to have a goth girl, right? Okay, yeah. So think of who is the best goth girl around today. Beth, best goth girl around today. When... Oh, Wednesday Adams. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Jenna Ortega. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Okay. She is coming to play it. I'm like, I'm here for it. Um, I, I got to interject something else real mm-hmm. quick here while we're... Still not even done with this psalm. I know. We have hit over a half an hour on this podcast already. Oh. I think we might need to break this into sections. Okay. This okay. might need to be a one psalm and done today. Oh, gosh. So, okay. Because <laughs> otherwise, even if we go to a second one, we're going to an hour on this episode. Okay. So. Well, I blame you. You blame me? Yeah. I blame you. You started off this podcast saying that it was going to be boring, and then I was like, I need to make this one for the history books. So I was like... I'm going to do good. And I'm going to say good shit. You were saying good shit. Yeah. I mean, I'm bringing the pop culture references. I think, if anything, I proved you wrong and made this a really fantastic episode. I think. With your help, of course. That's what I was hoping for. That's yeah. why I was telling you up front. This is going to suck. Give it your all. Okay. Bring bring it. I brought it. You brought it. It's brought been it. brought in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's finish up 78 and see where we sit. <laughs> We're going to okay. be sitting too long. I okay. can tell you that. He abandoned, oh wait, he rejected Israel completely. He abandoned the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent he had set up among men. He sent the ark of his might into captivity, his splendor into the hands of the enemy. It's a real shame. They put a lot of work into that tabernacle. I know. Like we spent so long reading about the making of that fucking tabernacle. I know. And then they were like, boom, gone. <laughs> <laughs> He gave his people over to the sword. He was very angry with his inheritance. Yeah. What? I don't... It... You're magic. Yeah. <laughs> You're worried about your inheritance? What? What? He's able to harden Pharaoh's heart, but he can't make his people worship him? I don't... like. It sounds to it, me like, are you only a god of badness and not goodness? Well, and, and this is what people would say. They'd be like, God has given you free will. And I'm like... Right. Yeah. But not so, Pharaoh. He didn't right. Give Pharaoh didn't give free Pharaoh will. free will. And and then the question comes in: Does God know what's going to happen in the future? Is he is he omniscient? Because you guys claim he's omniscient, also. Right. So if he's omniscient, that means it's written means in stone. I didn't have a choice, and he already fucking knew. Or, and he's getting mad anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, that, that's the stupidest shit I've ever heard of. It's. Having your cake and eating it too, but then there's still one in the freezer as well. Right. If he knows what's going to happen, why would he get angry about it? Right. So he's not... He, he, okay, there's three three choices. and I, I, I know which one I'm going to pick. Mm-hmm. He's either not omniscient, mm-hmm. and that goes against things people say about God, mm-hmm. or he is omniscient, and we have no free will, and everything's predetermined, and therefore, why is he mad? Or three... He doesn't fucking exist. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. That was that the one, one I was going to go with, too. Yeah. Okay, okay. Sorry. I just mm. I had to get there, you know, roundabout first. Sure, sure. Right. Give all the other options. All the other. I wanted to pl- present all the options available. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, yeah. Okay. So. 
Fire consumed their young men, and their maidens had no wedding songs. Oh, ah. that's so sad. Their priests were put to the sword, and their widows could not weep. Then the Lord awoke as from sleep, as a man wakes from the stupor of wine. I didn't know God went to oh, sleep. Oh, so he was like drunk asleep. He was, he was having, he had like, like a hangover. I didn't know he was asleep. I didn't know he could sleep. What is this? Why would he sleep? Why does he need to sleep? I don't, but he woke up as from a stupor of wine. He beat back his enemies. He put them to everlasting shame. Then he rejected the tents of Joseph. He did not choose the tribe of Ephraim, but he chose the tribe of Judah, Mount Zion, which he loved. Mm. Okay. Okay. This is weird. Yeah, it is. I didn't know he fell asleep. I didn't either. I knew he was absent. He did rest at the end of the creation thing. Remember? Right, but that was way back in Genesis. Yeah. We're like way past that. Right, right. He built his sanctuary like the heights, like the earth he, that he established forever. He chose David as servant and took him from the sheep pens. From tending the sheep, he brought him to be the shepherd of his people, Jacob of Israel, his inheritance. Mm. And David shepherded did, did them with, integrity of heart with skillful hands he led them the end of 78 so at some point between um I, i'm not even sure moses or joseph mm -hmm. and then david or whatever mm -hmm. shit fell apart and because he was or asleep. like even along the way maybe somewhere i'm not sure when this happened right. but at some point he fell asleep and then woke up and then he was like oh fuck I, uh, i'm gonna fix shit now yeah Okay. That tracks. And here's here's David. David's going to fix it all. But then he fell back asleep, apparently, because there was all those shitty kings. Remember all those shitty kings? I remember them because we had to read about them twice over. Yeah. Yeah. So apparently he went back to sleep because he was just tired or something. And then he's been asleep ever since. I'm, it's been a long fucking time, apparently. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He He's asleep in, in space. Yeah. He's an alien. <laughs> all right. Psalm 78 is God's faithfulness to his unfaithful people, and it's a new beginning in Zion and David. It starts, give ear, O my people, to my law, and it is the second longest psalm with 72 verses. Mm, yeah. But hold on to your butts, because eventually when we hit Psalm 119, yeah. that one has 176 verses. Wow. And if you thought this was long, well, oh, that one's going to have to be a standalone then. Yeah. Because this one's already, we're at 40 minutes again. Oh, so, yeah. This was only the first of the three great history psalms, the others being the ones I was going to get to, 105 and 106. Yeah. And that's my notes. Okay. For 78. Well, I think, I think we did a lot of uh, Damage. commentary throughout. So, yeah. you know, maybe the notes weren't as special this time. As, they weren't. As our commentary throughout. Because right. that was fun. It kind of was, actually. <laughs> I mean, I am curious, like, what other history do you have that, I mean, are we going to read the same thing again in 105 and then again in 106? I hope not. That I would really not. suck. I hope not, too. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, that, that was a long fucking that psalm. That was a long fucking psalm. And I would hate to have to memorize that to re to rehearse oh, that for some sort of spell or something. Absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. But, um... Yeah, so we shortened this a bit. It's definitely not going to be for all three psalms that we said earlier. Right. And that was Psalm 78. It was. And tomorrow, hypothetically, um, I don't think these look as long. They aren't as long. We so, should be able to do numbers 105 and 106. So we'll finish up with book, book four, four and the uh, the histories or whatever of the of psalms things mm -hmm. here that we're doing. Right. So, all right. Well, We'll see you then. Yeah. Sorry about all the confusion. Well, I mean, we're confused. We're just right here like, how, what? How we're, are, are we, we doing we're done. this? What are we I guess doing? that's all we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Bye, guys. Bye. Hey, wife. I guess that's the end. But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Oh, my God. Stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. Ooh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. We have podcast-themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science-themed products. 
Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye.